You're watching CVN, continuing coverage of ESC Congress 2011. Welcome back. I'm Tony DeMaria here with Chris Cannon at the European Society meeting, and we're talking about the late-breaking clinical trials. And one of the interesting trials, a potentially underutilized therapy, was a report on the long-term Ephesus patients, functional class 2. Well, this is a, a key finding overall. Obviously, there a plerinone used and, and um, big benefit on mortality over the long term. And this focused on the high-risk groups, the elderly, diabetics, renal dysfunction, all the people where we tend to hesitate to use multi-pharmacy uh, and especially worrying about hyperkalemia. But a bigger you know, benefit in this group and very uh, robust findings to say this really should be utilized. It's a class one recommendation now to do so, and this helps support that. Oh, I, I agree with you. I, I myself, my own practice, uh, have, have not usually given class, functional class two patients uh, uh, eplaronone, and uh, based upon these these data in the high-risk patient, uh, uh, hyperkalemia is an issue, and a significant number of their patients did get a bit hyperkalemic, but I think if you watch out for that, probably reasonable. Uh, one of the other studies that attracted a fair amount of attention was the long-term follow-up of the PACE trial, and this was looking at the benefit of biventricular pacing rather than right ventricular pacing uh, in individuals who required pacing. And in fact, uh, in, in these subjects, uh, what was observed initially was that biventricular pacing prevented the uh, uh, reduced left ventricular function that's often associated with RV pacing. In this longer follow-up, they found that that continued to be true over two years, that there was less LV dysfunction in the bi-V pacing group uh, than was observed in the RV apical group. And in addition, a very interesting finding, they did some three-dimensional echocardiography, and they found that the patients who had dyssynchrony by 3D echo with RV apical pacing were the ones who showed the greatest deterioration of LV function. So presumably that's the group where you really would want to do by V. Well, it's a fascinating finding. I think one that we don't really think much about the bradycardic patients. Oh, they need a pacemaker. You send them off to the lab. And here there's looks like there's a decision to be made of what type of pacing that could benefit a lot of patients. Yeah, this this will be a cost-benefit relationship for sure, but it, it, it does look like a routine benefit, at least in, in those patients who develop the synchrony. Um, we also uh, had the uh, opportunity to witness a trial from Japan comparing PCI to cabbage, the so-called Crato PCI study. And this was a registry um, that looked at the sort of real-world application of this decision of PCI cabbage and then applied the high syntax score as the highest risk group. And are there benefits seen in the real world of cabbage as had been seen in the, in the syntax trial? And they, in fact, found very consistent findings that if you have diffuse disease as measured by the syntax score, that uh, a, a, an apparent benefit uh, with cabbage was seen with, with better outcomes. I think reaffirming what many of us have taken as, uh, you know, when looking at that three-vessel disease, if it's very diffuse, if one calculates a score, those are people to send off for cabbage. Yeah, three-vessel left main disease. Of course, it's a registry. It's subject to all the hazards of a retrospective trial. And uh, one always suspects that the highest risk patients were perhaps declined by the surgeons and pushed over to PCI. Uh, so it's definitely a, an issue that, uh, fortunately, it's consistent with the trial, so we can say that uh, we'll base it on the trial results. But, uh, but anyway, and I guess the final uh, one was looking at an agent uh, in the study shift 
that looked at heart rate lowering but not by beta blockade. Sure, Ivabradine. Ivabradine's actually been around for a long time. The SHIFT trial made quite a splash at this meeting last year when they showed a, a benefit in heart failure patients to reducing the heart rate. This was the long-term, uh, longer-term follow-up of, of uh, that same SHIFT trial, and it again confirmed the benefit, and here they specifically looked at remodeling, left ventricular remodeling over substantial period of time, and showed a benefit particularly uh, on end systolic volume. Uh, again, Chris, uh, uh, the patients had to have heart rates over 70 to begin with, and, uh, and, and so it, it's not clear that in a group of patients with heart rates less than that there would be a benefit, but, but it, it does suggest that uh, reduction of heart rate with ivabradine can reduce remodeling. I think a helpful uh, mechanistic study to understand the clinical benefits that they saw with that agent. So the link of uh, benefit in heart failure and remodeling is uh, reaffirmed, I think, in this study. Yeah, it is. And whether you could do that with beta blockers alone remains uh, uncertain. In any event, some very interesting uh, data, data, I think, such as uh, Ephesus that people can take into their home practice. Uh, so for CVN, thanks very much for being with us.